Hello and welcome to the basement. Today we're going to revisit our little friend here, the PowerBook 170. And what we want to do is to have a look at fixing the screen. So you may have seen on a previous video that this has a pretty significant tunnel vision problem where the screen gets darker from the edges the longer it's left on. And we tried an unorthodox fix which I'd seen on a Facebook group and to nobody's surprise it didn't work. Um, we didn't expect it to work but it was worth a shot. So today we're going to try the more conventional solution. I say solution uh, because we don't know if it's going to work or not. But that means we have to take the screen out of the computer again and we're going to bake it in an oven for a while and try and drive all of the moisture out of that panel. And then we'll see if that's made any difference. So before we can bake this panel, we need to obviously get it out of the machine. I've done that on a previous video, so I won't go through it again here. I'll just cut to a montage. Okay, that should do it. Let's see if we can get it out now. Yes, we've got it removed. So we'll have a look now what we do. We want to get the LCD panel off of the circuit board. So let's do that now. So here we have the LCD panel on the bench. Now you may remember in the last video, these are all the clips that we tightened to try and eliminate the problem, which of course did nothing. So now what we want to do is loosen all of these clips so that we can get that LCD panel off. And I have noticed that there's a backlight bulb here and that may be attached, but we'll find that out as we go. So let's start undoing these clips and seeing if we can get that panel off the circuit board. Okay, that's all the clips straightened. Just carefully easing it up off the circuit board. There we go. So that's our LCD panel. This is our backlight array. And you can also see all of these pins all the way down here. That's what uh, sends the signal to the LCDs to tell them to come on or off. So when we put it back together, um, we have to make sure it's in the right spot. <laughs> so that'll be interesting. But anyway, let's bake the panel and see if we can get the moisture out of it. Okay, here we are up in the house. We have our LCD panel. We have our oven. Oh, it, it looks like something's in there. Hang on a sec. Huh. Someone's been cooking chips. Which reminds me, if you want a freshly baked circuit board, you should check out PCB Way. It's the most reliable place to get PCBs. You can get advanced PCBs. You can even get them to assemble them for you. So it's so good for prototyping or any low run production. Now they also offer CNC machining and 3D printing. So you can get the cases made and you can get all your prototyping needs developed by them in house. They provide instant quotes so you know exactly what you're up for and they even give you expert feedback. So they look through your design and they give you feedback to make sure that everything's gonna work great. So thanks PCB Way for sponsoring this video. Let's bake this thing. So let's dial up our temperature and I think we want to use like a fan bake just to circulate the air in there. So I'll set it to fan and we're going to set the temp at 85. Now the reason I'm going for 85, I don't want it at 100 because I don't want to damage anything in there. So I want to keep it below boiling point and uh, 85 should be a nice temperature to dry everything out. Now all that's left to do is wait. So I'm going to give it about eight hours, get it nice and dry, put it back together, and we'll see if it's made any difference. Here's hoping. The screen's been baking for about nine hours. I mean, that's all day. So hopefully that's driven out any moisture from that panel. It's time to get it out and put it back in the machine. Okay, we're back down in the basement with our freshly baked LCD panel. And as you can see, it is looking very tasty. So what we wanna do now is put it back in the machine, but not just yet. I have something else I would also like to do. So we got this package from Rich's Random Retro Reviews. And uh, he's a great friend of the channel and he has sent this all the way from the UK. So 
shout out to Rich, thank you very much. We're gonna unbox this because it contains some goodies for this machine that we wanna stick inside. So we might as well do it all at the same time. Let's get unboxing. So here's the box from Rich and we're gonna open it up and see what he's actually sent us. So I'm fairly excited because I have a bit of a clue what it might be. Okay, so we have a video adapter cable. So that plugs into the back of a PowerBook 540 or 520 and outputs um, video. I think that also fits in a PowerBook 180, uh, which I do have lying around somewhere. So that's gonna be a very handy thing. And we have some, what looks like RAM, probably from an old Mac. And, Oh, look at this, we have a power supply. So it's a PowerBook 45 watt adapter. It has the large style barrel plug on it. So it'll be for the older style PowerBooks like the G3s and stuff. So that'll be very handy. Thanks, Rich. And a letter. Trust this package arrived successfully and undamaged. Yes, it did. Contained is as discussed, a power supply for a PowerBook, a PowerBook external monitor connected to 256K VRAM SIM, so that's what these are, from my LC475, and a little something special from Silicon Insider to go with your PowerBook from your last video, and that's in this package here. I thoroughly enjoy your videos, even the ones I wouldn't normally be interested in. Thanks, Rich. Hey, if you want to check out a channel about old Macs, and let's face it, if you're watching me fiddle around with this PowerBook 170, that's probably you, then you should check out Rich's Random Retro Reviews. I'll put a link in the description down below. Check him out, great channel. Let's get on with what he has sent us. So let's see what this special thing is for the PowerBook. So we've got some installation instructions, and here we have a six megabyte RAM chip. So thanks very much, Rich. That's very generous, and we here at the basement really appreciate it. So thank you very much. Okay, let's get to assembling this uh, PowerBook. Let's get the screen in, and let's get this RAM module in, and let's get it all back together and see if that screen works. Let's go. Now, before we put this back onto the diffuser and the circuit board that it mounts to, I'm gonna give it a quick clean because it's got um, just handling marks on the inside and the outside. So we wanna make sure we get rid of those so that they're not bugging me the entire time I'm using the machine. So just a bit of IPA and a clean window cleaning cloth. Well, that's all done. I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's some slight scratching in the middle of the screen here. That is where the trackball is when the screen's closed. So uh, that's obviously um, just damaged the glass over time. Nothing we can clean off. And there's a few other little sort of scratch marks here, which I can't get out, but that is what it is. So it's nice and clean. It's ready to go back on the circuit board. So when we attach the screen to the circuit board, it has to be exactly lined up because around the edge of the screen, you have these contact points all the way along the edge, these tiny little contacts, and they'll have to line up with the exact right contact on the circuit board here. So we have to make sure that the alignment is spot on. Thankfully, there's actually a way we can do this, which I've noticed. I'm gonna zoom in and show you what I mean. In all four corners of the screen, we have these tiny little dots inside this little glass window here. And you can see there's a even tinier little cross in the middle of that dot. And that cross has to line up with these four crosses on the circuit board here. And when you get them lined up by looking down through the glass, so let's try that. Okay, down it goes. And then what I'm gonna do is look straight down these little windows and make sure that everything's lined up exactly right. Okay, I think I've got it right. It's quite hard because it's so tiny. And there's not a lot of movement in the screen once it's through these perforations in the board. So I'm going to start twisting it tight again and that locks the board against those contacts. And uh, we'll see if it works. Okay, that's them all tightened. Here's our screen. Let's get it back in the machine and the upgrades and fire it up, see what happens. So I've pulled the top of the laptop off just so we can get access to the CPU and memory area here. So we're going to remove 
the old chip which is in here now this is actually uh, a two megabyte chip so there's two megabytes soldered onto the motherboard plus these six megabytes is going to give us an eight megabyte machine so that's going to be a really handy upgrade now silicon insider is the guy who makes these and you can find him uh, i think he's on instagram or somewhere and uh, you can find him and contact him if you require this sort of stuff he makes these um, for old Macs so he does um, VRAM and all sorts of cool little things which stuff we can't find anymore um, he's making it so that's great and it's this cool purple color um, so PS RAM uh, PowerBook 140 170 6 megabyte so it's going to be a great addition let's pop it in the machine Right, it's back together, moment of truth. Let's turn it on, see if the screen actually works. And if it does work, let's see if the tunnel vision problem has been fixed. And we'll check out if we're getting our full eight gig of RAM, eight gig, eight meg of RAM in the machine as well. Okay, we've got something on the screen, so that's a good start. It uh, normally does that funny pattern when it turns on. So it appears that whatever uh, I've done to take it apart and put it back together it's still working so that is a great sign we're getting all the uh, the good Macintosh messages coming up so it's booting well that's a bit of a relief it's always nerve-wracking pulling something apart that much and putting it back together you don't want to make it worse uh, which we never do on this channel so I'm going to let it boot up and then we'll have a look if that tunnel vision problem is finished and if our 6 or 8 meg of RAM is on the machine. Okay, it's finished booting. Let's have a look at about this Macintosh and see if that memory is showing up. And there it is, 8 meg. So thanks Rich, it's going to be a great addition to this machine, maxing it out. But for now, let's leave it on for a while and see what the screen does in regards to that tunnel vision problem. And fingers crossed, it's either fixed or a lot better than it was. Okay, so I've waited for 45 minutes. The computer's been on the whole time. The screen's been on. And I'll show you what it looks like now. That's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So if you look at these corners, there is ever so slightly a little bit of darkening there. Uh, this is probably the worst corner. There's a little bit of darkening there. Um, this corner, just very slight darkening and same with this one here but after 45 minutes it uh, everything looks really good so I'm really stoked with that that's actually a really great result so we now know that this is really the definitive fix for the tunnel vision problem you've got to pull that display out take the LCD panel off bake it in my case I baked it for nine hours at 85 degrees Celsius and uh, once it cools down put it all back together and granted it's not perfect but it is almost perfect. So for me, that's close enough for a win. I'm pretty happy with the way it is. It's gonna be a good addition to the collection and all the better for working properly. You've been in the basement. Hope this has been helpful for you today. Have a great day.